Dork Lair. Welcome to another Dork Lair action figure review. Today I'm taking a look at the Mezco 112 Collective Darkest Dawn Batman Supreme Knight. This is the fourth and I'm now going to assume the final in their Supreme Knight lineup. Um, I kind of wasn't really expecting this figure. I had a feeling that after we saw the black one that had all those swap out parts, that that was kind of their way of maybe doing, uh, you know, the final two in one kit. But they went and did it, and we got a blue MDX version, and it's it's really good. I mean, these figures are packed with so much stuff. They put a lot of love into their Batman figures. I know this suit is pretty busy. There's like a lot going on here, um, but if you're okay with that kind of Batman variant suit kind of thing, then uh, I think you're gonna like this figure. It's a really nice quality piece and it mixes in well with the rest of the line uh, and a lot of swap out options. So uh, without further ado, let's get into this review. First up, we have the packaging. It's your usual size. I know they've been changing up the exclusive size, size boxes, but this is the usual exclusive size box. Um, the weird thing though, is that they have the px version on the back <laughs> so I, I don't know what's up with that but that that is 100 percent the previews exclusive version that is not the figure in the box what's on the back and i don't really care one way or another because i'm not a fan of these like filtered figure photos on the back i really loved it when they would put artwork on the back of these boxes but um, not as much anymore especially with these batman figures but i gotta say like the packaging, you know, if they can cut some costs on the packaging, I'm fine with it because these things are super, super loaded. This is a gray box, um, you know, and it's basically the same as the other ones, but just gray. So, yeah, I mean, aside from the fact that it's got the wrong figure on the back, it's perfectly fine. And let's get a look at the details on this figure. So here's the front look, the whole entire silhouette. You can kind of get the, the whole look to it. I've got the regular head back on there kind of the stock look right out of the box here. And here it is from the front. Here's his left side. Here's the right side. And then here he is with the cape off so that you can see how he looks from the back. Bringing him in close so you can see the head sculpt here. It's the same head sculpt as the other Supreme Knights. So if you've seen my other reviews, a lot of the sculpt and um, accessories and all that stuff is gonna be the same, but this is the head from the regular Supreme Knight. It also comes with the heads from the PX. So the MDX releases really are the best of both the PX releases and the regular releases. But this is the head from the regular release. And then here's the other head from the regular release. Here's the head from the previews exclusive. And then here's the other head from the previews exclusive. So just painted in the colors of, of this version. And of course we have the unmasked Bruce Wayne head that all of the versions come with. I think he looks great. And like I said before, Mezco has done a great job of aging up that same sculpt from ascending through Sovereign and now into Supreme. Just kind of looking around at the blue parts, here's the head sculpt. You can see there's a little bit of a different shade of blue on those like armor panels on the side. And then you have some more of that kind of same color scheme going on in the armor on the gauntlets and the same thing in the armor on the boots here. And the same darkish blue, I believe this is pretty close to matching up with the Sovereign Knight blue which is nice because we can swap that head and I'll show you that when we get into the accessories. But there's the cape here. And also when we get to the accessories, we can take a look at the wired cape that is swap out as well. And probably the biggest thing that's unique to this figure is the suit itself. The way the suit is designed and the material and stuff with all the panels and whatnot, it's almost like a cross between like hybrid between the regular and the uh, the shadow edition where you have these overlaid panels, but you also have this kind of thicker almost material that feels sort of like the Punisher exclusive, the, the uh, Spec Ops Punisher. So yeah, it's a pretty cool material, definitely busy. So if you don't like your figures to have kind of that busy like armored pieces and overlay parts. You're probably not gonna like this, but I actually enjoy it. I think it's kind of neat. It gives it almost like a retro style, like a 90s Batman type thing here. Um, but yeah, I could see why people might not enjoy that. The bat symbol that comes on him is black and then there's a few other symbols. So maybe we can go through those right now. So in addition to the smaller, thinner one, he's got the big chunky one. And then he's also got the oval, which has this very bright yellow to kind of match the belt. They're not the same color yellow, but they are both very bright 
in their own way. This is like, a, the belt is like a gold and then this really is a yellow color. And I, I love that. And I've seen, I think it was Cobra Shadow Joe's did, um, they took this belt, which you can't just remove. You have to unglue it. And I haven't decided if I want to unglue mine yet, um, but you have to unglue it and you can swap it out with the the shadow edition and it looks really cool it's a great swap because you get the silvery colors on here and then you get the yellow colors and the black so that's pretty neat option for those of you who might want to swap it in fact i can show you what the symbol looks like on him real quick so yeah so that, i mean that is awesome and then put that yellow belt on there and very cool i'm just not ready to unglue and technically modify my figure even though it's not it's it just unglues it and then you have to maybe put a little sticky tack in there to put it back on. But it's not a super damaging mod, but it is a mod, so I'm not sure I want to do it yet. And for those who might be curious, here's just a quick look. At the top is the Shadow Edition bat symbol, and on the bottom is the Darkest Dawn Edition. So you can see it's a flatter, almost a gray on the uh, Darkest Dawn, and a shinier black on the uh, Shadow Edition. All right, and just one more kind of close-up looking around the suit here. Got some neat kind of faux straps and whatnot throughout essentially you know holding that fake armor on there um, and some really cool paint applications you got these kind of silver gray rivets and the boots and stuff um, but overall it's a pretty cool pretty cool looking figure and like the other supreme knights one of the coolest innovations that they have done with the with this iteration of their batman figure is to have the cape removable and that is through a magnetic headpiece so the head has a magnet underneath and you just pull it right off and you can swap the cape and just put the next one on now mine not might not look perfect because i'm doing it live on the video here but um you can fudge around with it and mess around with it and, and get it exactly to your liking but then you can get the loose cape off and you've got the wired cape and you can get into like some really cool dramatic poses and stuff with that cape flowing out of there so that is a really neat option for the um for the swap out capes and i love that they did that really cool innovation next up let's get a look at the darkest dawn batman next to a couple other mezco batman figures first up here he is next to the shadow edition on the left and the regular edition on the right and this will give you a sense of the three different suit types in this lineup of supreme knight batmans the regular edition has very similar suit to the px so suit wise those two are very similar um, and then you can kind of see like it's more like an armored kind of thing. It's like a heavier, chunkier material. I definitely prefer this. I think this is still my favorite of all of them. This figure is just a beast. I love it. And um, it doesn't have some of the little issues like with these magnetic emblems, you have to be kind of very gentle and careful with them because they can put imprints on there. Very much so with the Shadow Edition. But there you go, a sense of how he looks with the shadow and the regular. And then here we have the Supreme Knight PX on the left and the Sovereign Knight PX on the right. So you can get a sense of the difference in the blues. In fact, the Sovereign Knight and the Darkest Dawn, they have very similar blue, very similar color scheme. And the blue on these two is much different. Like this is a much more metallic kind of a blue than what, what these other two figures have. So swapping the heads between these two is actually very reasonable let me show you that now cool so here's how the the darkest dawn looks with the px uh sovereign knight head on there the blue head and i think this is great one of the things i was a little bit disappointed by with the px supreme knight was that the blue was so different that i wasn't able to do this swap but now this matches up great so i'm pretty happy with this i'll probably have it like this on my shelf rather than um one of the one of the supreme heads i i really wanted to do this and i finally can so that is a great swap it looks really good in my opinion these the sovereign knight heads are like my go-to swap heads um i recently finalized getting this guy swapped not only did i swap the head but i swapped the neck as well and i put a wired cape on so this figure is looking awesome now all right for accessories we might as well start off with this cool diorama piece and this is the smoke that a lot of the mescos have been coming with those ninja gomez figures and then now these batman figures have been coming with the smoke so that's pretty cool and there's a few different shades of color down in the bottom there um, i like these they're flimsy but they look cool and they take the light on really well and like i said before he does come with two different capes he's got the wired and then the loose 
He comes with an array of batarangs. He's got four of these like chunky batarangs and then four of these longer ones. And these longer ones do have a little bit of paint on there. So they got a little blue edge to them on the blade side. He's also got clusters of those two different small batarang sets so that you can have him like holding a bunch of them ready to throw them all at once. And then he's got two bigger batarangs and these are um, painted really nicely with these accents and, and washes throughout. He's also got this melee weapon, this kind of like double bladed weapon here that like the other ones, it detaches and then folds down into almost like a hatchet style weapon. Lots of intricate paint details on the grapple gun. And he comes with three different types of grappling hooks. One's got the wire, one's closed, and one's open. And you can stick these into the tip of the grapple gun, like so. And he's got the same equalizer. Again, lots of great intricate little paint details, giving this an awesome blue gold look as well. Of course, he comes with the usual five inch Mezco stand with the peg. And it's also got the flight arm with it. And of course, he's got a whole bunch of hands. He's got a pair of regular gripping hands right over here. And then on this side, he's got a pair of um, hands where the, they're gripping hands, but the fingers are sort of separated so that you can thread batarangs in between. And then he's got a pair of gesturing hands over here. And then he's got a pair, he's got a single uh, one hand for the grapple gun with the trigger finger. And then he's got a pair of hands for utilizing the, um, the equalizer. And of course the fists that come on him as well. So absolutely loaded, loaded Batman figure. And then last but not least, we'll take a look at the articulation. I just kind of took everything off of him so that you can see. And I do kind of recommend removing the emblem, then posing him, then putting it back on because it can, you can already see there, there's like a little bit of indents. Those will go away if you take it off for a while, but when you're shifting and moving around and pushing into it, I don't really trust it. I don't want it to rip there. So um, that's one of the knocks on the figure is it feels like those magnetic things were maybe a little too strong or a little too, not the right material to put them on top of. But other than that, they're, they're pretty cool and it's just such a neat option to have the swap out ability. So into the articulation, um, it can be a little tricky articulating the head because when you rotate it back, the magnet wants to pop up. But if you hold it down, he can, he can look up, he can look down, he can go side to side and some pretty good articulation in the head there. Of course, the, the neck doesn't really move around much, but you could get a little action if you mess around with it a little bit and just kind of move it. In the shoulders, you can see that there's some butterfly joint going on. So pretty... Pretty cool that there's some butterfly joints in these shoulders. I don't think the figures used to have them. And then we have a twist at the top of the bicep. Double jointed elbow, gauntlets get in the way. Not a ton of range there, but pretty good considering all the armor. The arms can swing all the way up and then you can twist at the top of the torso, crunch forward and back and side to side. Like the other Supreme Knight Batmans, there's just not a lot of waist motion there. It's kind of hard to get them to move at the waist area. So a little limited there. And then um, the legs can kick forward and they can kick back. There's a twist at the thigh. You can get them out into the splits. He's got double jointed knees. There's a cut at the boot. His feet can point down this far and then they can point back up a little bit. And there is a rocker at the ankle, but you have to really work it to get it going to the side. But the more you work it, the better it gets out to that side angle. So it can probably rock out about that far to the side. So overall, I think this is a fantastic figure. This has got some really cool parts and it brought a few new things with these bright colors to the, to the wave of figures. And um, I, you know, I mean, out of the box, like there's just so much stuff with it that it's, in my opinion, the retail price at least was a great deal. I know that the aftermarket right now is going to be probably kind of difficult, but I kind of checked eBay and I saw that there are quite a few available on eBay. So this being a two per person, you know, keep your eye on that secondary market. There might be a little bit of undercutting going on and you might get this, you know, I mean, if you can find it for like 125, that's not terribly higher than retail. I think it was 95 or 90 and then you had to add in shipping and stuff. So a lot of people paid a hundred or more for it to begin with. Um, currently, I think I'm seeing the 160 to 180 range on eBay, but you know, 
get in the groups, look for somebody trying to unload their extra. You might be able to find it in that like 125, 130 range as more and more people get this in hand. So um, yeah, if you can get it for that, highly recommend. Of course, if you don't like the busy armor and stuff, pass on this because the armor is very busy um, or the, you know, the, the material, the suit material. But it adds a lot of options and it brings some swap parts and some cool options like that that yellow oval that you can put on the uh, the shadow edition. Really cool. I'm going to be putting the Sovereign Knight PX head on this one. So it mixes well. It mixes better than the PX Supreme Knight did with the other Batman figures from Mezco. So overall, very happy with this figure. Thanks for watching my video. And until next time, may the force be with you. Follow me into